Welcome to your daily dose of Theological German. We're on installment number three of this excerpt from Albert Schweitzer's The Kingdom of God and Christendom. So today's sentence is a short sentence, but it's actually a little bit confusing um, if you're not paying close attention. So I'm going to give you a real dynamic equivalent translation and then try to show you how I got there. So um, as a member of the priesthood of Jerusalem, he, that is Ezekiel, comes in 597 with the first uh, wave of exiles to Babylon. So this sentence will trip you up pretty quickly if you're not paying attention because there's no commas here. So you're looking at this thinking it's going to be a straightforward sentence without a bunch of clauses. You're then seeing this der and thinking this has got to be the subject masculine nominative, right? Makes perfect sense. So you're going to start off and say the priesthood of Jerusalem. Uh, you're going to be slightly confused by this next word and you're going to just keep looking for your conjugated verb and you're going to see it there as a third person verb. Ah, yes, the priesthood of Jerusalem comes. And then you're going to get really stuck because you're going to suddenly see this pronoun, which is a nominative pronoun, and you're going to be like, uh, what's happening here? That seems like it should be the subject. He comes. Well, but now what do I do with all this priesthood stuff? Well, here's what you've missed, is that any noun ending in Schaft is an abstract noun in German. And Schaft, for sure, as well as a host of other kind of abstract noun formations, are all feminine in gender. And so this is actually a feminine now, the priests, although they did not allow women to be priests, the priesthood ended up being a feminine construct, which I find kind of like amusing and also instructive when it comes to arguments about gender in language. But anyways, that's getting way off topic. Uh, the point is the priesthood is a feminine thing. And so this der has to be not a nominative masculine because with the feminine paradigm, your der is going to be either accused or sorry, uh, dative or genitive. Uh, in this case, it's dative, and so you essentially can kind of ignore that at first and just go get your subject and your verb and try to make some sense of the sentence. And so you'll see that the kind of main clause is actually down here. So because this thing's dative, you're ignoring it. What's actually going on is that's some kind of a subordinate clause, and you'll see how that works in a minute. But but what that means is that your verb here, kommt, is in second position, and then your subject follows your verb. And so that's why you have, have the structure that you have. And so the main clause is going to be something like, uh, he comes in 597 with the first wave of exiles to Babylon. Nach here is often used with um, destinations uh, to indicate the place, you know, the direction toward a destination or something like that. So you can just say two in this case. Um, and so, yeah, he's the, he came or comes with the first wave of exiles to Babylon. And so now you just have to figure out what's this clause doing at the beginning of the sentence and how is it formulated? And that's where you've got to pick up this verb here, which is actually a present participle. And you're looking at that going, hey, I see a get in here. So you might think, oh, this is the verb zuhoren. And you would be totally wrong because, in fact, it's not that verb because this is not a past participle, but it is a present participle, which you can tell by this D on the end. So you actually have to realize that there is, well, you should know this is a very common verb. Gehoren is a, a very common verb, meaning to belong. And um, when you put the zu prefix on that verb, you have kind of a new verb that's only very slightly nuanced. Uh, from that initial kind of verb, but the point is that's a new separable verb, and so that's the verb you want to look up in the dictionary. So when you look up that verb in the dictionary, it's just kind of instructive here that you don't have a specific entry for it. This is just how you use your dictionary. you got to make sure you're scanning the entries of other words because there'll be words you need to see buried in them sometimes. So here you see an entry for a noun, and um, that noun has within it sort of a related verb, and you can see that it is a intransitive verb and it takes a dative uh, object, which is why it's intransitive, because technically um, it's not acting on the object. If it's dative, you have a different kind of relationship and that's why it takes a dative object. So you know it's used with the dative and you know that der Priesterschaft is going to be a dative expression. And so that makes perfect sense. And then you can see that it just means to belong to. And so you can actually just use a participle in English as well and say something like belonging to the priesthood 
of Jerusalem, comma, he comes in 597 with the first wave of exiles to Babylon. So in English, we can use participles like that to form a subordinate clause. And in German, they'll do it too, although it's not as common as other ways of forming those kinds of clauses. Um, and certainly with a present participle, I mean, almost always that form that you see is going to be used as an adjective or something. So this is a bit of a unique instance, but that's what's going on. And so I translated it to make it more clear uh, with a different kind of expression and said, as a member of the priest in Jerusalem, he came in 597 with the first wave of exiles. Because the whole point is that's kind of relevant information being given up front there as to why he would have been in the first wave. He was one of the elite. I mean, that's basically uh, what's going on here. And so he was in the first wave because he was one of the priests. So you could even actually give it a causal nuance. And anybody that has studied Greek actually will have seen these kinds of participial constructions all over the place. And it's just no end of headaches in English trying to decide how do you interpret it? Because you can sort of, you know, is it while being a priest in Jerusalem? Is it because he was a priest in Jerusalem? Is it although being a priest in Jerusalem? And so you kind of like actually have a wide variety of options and you have to decide from context, what's that participle really uh, kind of contributing to the, the contextual framing of the main clause, which is what's going on. The only other thing I want to point out is uh, this other word here, um, Wegführung, which is a noun, and you won't find that noun in your dictionary. And so what you can do, anytime you see that U-N-G ending, you can assume this noun has been formed from a verb, most likely. And so you can try to find a verb and then, and then work out the meaning of the noun from the verb. And so it's the same thing when you look this up in the dictionary, just like the last entry. There's no actual entry for the noun, but there's also no entry for the verb specifically. Instead, the verb is hiding under this entry because there are several verbs that take the veg prefix, and so they all get listed together, and one of them is fjörn, and so it's a transitive verb, and it means to lead or take away or carry off. And so, again, to be really literal, you could say something like the first taking away or the first carrying off, but I just said the first wave of exiles because in context, that's kind of what it's referring to. So I hope you found that helpful as always. And please do like and subscribe and share this with all of your friends and relations. And hopefully we'll continue to grow the channel and it'll continue to produce helpful German videos for all and sundry. <laughs>